Is Bitcoin going to be the next NASDAQ? I have an article and an opinion on that coming from Coinbesk. Hello everyone and welcome to OG Crypto and NFTs. My name is Troy and we go over the latest news and information in the crypto world. Very first article here is an opinion from Coindesk and it says for financial advisors, Bitcoin is the next NASDAQ. Now I know that's kind of crazy to think about, but if you, if you actually break Bitcoin down, it's, it solves several problems or solves no problems if the way you look at it. Number one, it can be used as a cryptocurrency. So currently right now, if you wanted to buy something at Starbucks or buy something at the grocery store, you could actually use Bitcoin if they take it. And that seems to be the number one currency that they'll take. If you go to AMC theaters right now, you could use Bitcoin to buy that theater ticket to see that Top Gun movie that came out today. Otherwise, what else can you use for Bitcoin? Well, it's also digital gold. So some people are using it as gold, as it being the standard, as the best digital standard. There's only going to be 21 million Bitcoin ever minted. And there's a percentage that that's already been lost in the cold wallets or lost wallets out there. So there's going to be there's a very, very limited amount. And with that being said, I think that people are going to use it more as digital gold, as a hedge against inflation more than anything else, but it has multiple uses. And that's why in this article by Andy Estrin, he goes over all the different uses and why he thinks it's going to be that big of an asset class part of the next actual NASDAQ. Next article here is about Terra Luna and we've just kind of beat our heads with this. This is what's next for Terra Luna as failed crypto project attempts a new path forward. This is from CNBC. We know for a fact that, of course, Terra Luna and UST just crashed. It was, it was, it was just ugly all the way, flamed down, straight to the ground, boom, blew up. And then Do Kwon has turned around and done everything he can. And I feel in a desperation that to get, you know, Terra 2.0 up and running. So he's had several different community votes. Finally, I mean, if you keep voting on enough stuff, you're, you're bound to get something passed. So after finagling a few things, talking some validators, you know, dealing with the community, he finally got it passed. And now today he's going to launch 2.0 and he's going to do airdrops tomorrow. Now there's all different types of airdrops and when you can, when you get your airdrop and how much you're getting. And then of course, somewhere in the future, getting more airdrop. All I know is that people are just antsy about this. I think that just the developers have left, a lot of the developers have left his, his system. The, the real beauty of you know, Terra 1.0 or Terra Classic, as they're gonna call it now, is that the UST peg was to $1 and you had Anchor Protocol giving out 20% yields, which was completely un, un, unstainable. It was it just, it couldn't, it couldn't keep that going. And too many people out there were too excited. But when you take a step back, you would have seen this happening. Many people started calling it a Ponzi. And at the end, guess what it was? A Ponzi. People started pulling their money out and there wasn't enough money coming in on the backside. And just like a Ponzi, a Ponzi or a house of cards, it collapsed all over the place. Very ugly. $40 billion wiped out literally in 24 to 48 hours. And now I'm going to give this guy another chance, a do over. There's just nothing to do over at this point. There's nothing that he's bringing to the table that makes any sense that he will ever be back in the top 10 or even 20 cryptos. It's going to take years and years and years for us to even have this conversation. The only thing he has going for him is a strong community and half and all, all but a few have been completely burned from it. Does he have VC funding? Does he have other funding coming in? We're going to find out here in the next week or two, how many people have backed him. Now he's going to end up on cryptocurrency exchanges. He kind of worked out deals about that, which is fine as you can trade the new 2.0 somewhere on Saturday and Sunday, but is it really going to be worth anything? Number one. And the second that these airdrops hit, how many people are going to sell instantly on the spot and then immediately lower the price. So there's a lot of unknowns here. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, you know, in my eyes to continually, you know, reliving this nightmare, but we're going to be reliving it for a while until this all settles down and it becomes just 
part of the top 200 cryptos, you know, and nobody's going to care at that point. Next article here is a very interesting one. SEC's Hester Pierce says that U.S. has dropped the ball on crypto regulation. As we know, the SEC uh, has had had four or five different, you know, governors or, you know, that had to vote on this XRP lawsuit. Well, Hester Pierce actually voted and she voted not to sue Ripple. And it's just this nightmare that she keeps coming out and she's been very vocal at the SEC. We don't have any direction on crypto. All we do is we keep trying to enforce it, enforce whatever rules we have, but those rules are, are moving. They're just, they keep, they keep being adjusted depending on the lawsuit that we keep putting out. It doesn't make any sense at this point. So she's been around yelling and screaming this now for a while, but Gary Gensler has nothing, doesn't want to listen to her, doesn't want to listen at all, but she's making a case and, it's, and it becomes louder and louder as she goes on the Hill and she has conversations with senators and House representatives. I'm excited about this, though there's a lot more going on to vote on rather than regulation of stable coins and regulation of you know, cryptocurrency. Right now, I mean, we have just quite a lot that we needed to, to handle. Obviously, the economy is an issue, but voting on you know, the guns and then, you know, you know gun amendments uh, that people want that, to legislate, the, the Wade versus Roe, you know, people want to have votes on that, you know, and, and then bringing up all the Ukraine or other pieces of the world that's just kind of a nightmare that we're dying to throw money at, even though inflation is kind of crazy. So I don't see it happening this year, but I believe in the first quarter, I've been saying this, you know, Senator Toomey's bill on stable coins, I think is going to be voted on in the fourth quarter, the first quarter of next year. And I think that this is going to be the first step of what Hester Pierce has been talking about. Let's find the regulation first before the enforcement doesn't make any sense. Next article, very comedy, comical article here. There were 25 NFTs stolen by a hacker, you know, uh, in, a, in a Solana based game. And it, it just was tragic. And we're hearing this all the time. You know, you, you give your keys away to your wallet. People, you know, get manipulated. They get, they get, you know, fake this, fake that, you know, scammed, whatever happens all the time. But the community rallied around this particular owner and came back and told everyone, Hey, if you sell, you know, if you sell your NFTs, we're going to have a 98% royalty form. They usually charge 5%. And this is normal for most NFT communities. When they resell their, their NFTs, there's a 5% commission. If you want to call it, that goes back into the community, keeps the community, you know, plush with cash. But on this particular community, they decided, Hey, let's go ahead and do 98% or if he puts them up for sale, we're going to end up buying them all. And he's, and, and then we're getting all the money back. So we're getting 98% of the money that we put into buying them. He did it. He put them up for sale. Boom. Community bought it. All got them all back, gave it back to that particular owner and story solved. This is one way the community can really rally around someone that's been scammed. I love this story. I'm going to publish this on our Instagram. You guys, if you don't have our Instagram, please go check it out. Subscribe to it. It's OG Crypto and NFTs. Take a look at it. Just started that up. Been posting on it. Post one to two, every, uh, two posts every single day. Check it out. Have fun. Otherwise, if you like our content, please hit that like button. Otherwise, smash the subscribe button. Get me up here. Help me out, guys. Help me. And I will continue to bring this kind of content to you. Cutting edge right at the moment. Go for it. Take care. You guys have a good weekend. I'll be back on Tuesday and get you more crypto updates.